the War Artists Advisory Committee is set up during the Second World War um, and it builds on work in the First World War in which there was a, um, a, a war artist committee to buy works of art for the nation and to commission works about the conflict for the nation. And in the First World War there was a women artist subgroup and in the Second World War they decided to build on that and have an actual committee and they commissioned women. But the volume of women artists compared to men remained almost the same. So in the First World War it's about... 8% in the Second World War, it's about 13%. So women are a marginal presence, really, and also the records seem to indicate that they were paid slightly less on the whole. They didn't get the major commissions. Uh, they were given shorter-term contracts for work that they were doing for the for WAC. And also um, there was only one artist, in fact, during the Second World War who was actually on a salary, and that was Evelyn Dunbar. So for many women artists, actually making war work was more difficult um, they were paid less and it was a more kind of risky and tenuous enterprise. The question of what women are allowed to paint is actually very interesting because during the Second World War, for the first couple of years of the war, because Britain was doing so badly in Europe, most artists were painting subjects on the home front. Given that though, that you have to understand that in the provi with the proviso that women weren't being commissioned um, and as salaried artists, so they weren't painting they didn't have the kind of volume of work, they weren't in the environments that the male artists got to paint. And there is evidence, when you look at the work that was produced by the women, that they were steered towards what were considered women's subjects. So there are paintings of, not only for civil defence and women involved in that, but um, Evelyn Dunbar, who was the only woman commissioned as a salaried war artist during the Second World War, painted women can canning fruit and women working as nurses in the evacuated St Thomas's Hospital. So there was an idea of not only that women couldn't paint the same subjects, but they had to be, there were certain subjects that were more suitable for women to paint. Now, this is not to denigrate those women that were painting women's work in the war, because there was a lot of very valuable and interesting work. But when we think back to what war art is, often that work is kind of slightly denigrated because it's not seen as real war art. When in fact, if you're, if you're pushed towards a certain area, then you're telling the story of, of what a lot of women's experience was during the war. We only have to think about more recent women's work about the war to see that actually women don't go for particular subjects. You've got everyone from Fiona Banner who makes work with the actual planes themselves and puts the Jaguar and the um, Harrier in Tate Britain, the actual machines. Everyone from that to uh, Frauke Egan who um, works with the um, detritus of the Balkan massacres. So there's no kind of subject that, they're not making nice subjects or women's subjects, they're making every subject that appeals to them as artists. And I actually think that you know, when we look back at the war, the Second World War, and what was produced during that time, we must remember that women artists at that time weren't given those options. They didn't have the range of subjects that, on the whole that men were given. And so we have to be attentive of that when we're making judgments about what's important in terms of war work and what stories should be told.